to the Jinx. Uh, pick has not been in the best of spots recently, but with this draw... Okie dokie. Let's get into it. Hanwha Life versus D plus Kia. Bit of a surprise. Oh, <clears throat> little Jinx action, the Deft Classic. Deft Classic here. They give Canyon the Lee Singer. And let's check here. So not going to first pick Varus or Ash. A little bit weird from Hanwha Life. A little bit weird. Um, banning out the Karma, banning out the Gnar. A little bit weird. But Kingen hasn't been playing that many champs successfully recently. Uh, Kana's Renekton is still up. There's a Jace in the top side. They may be trying to force out a Scion pick, or they'll ban Scion probably in the second rotation. Probably a mid Gragas, although this is a very good... Uh, flex for Hanwha because we've seen we've seen both Zeka and uh, and Kingen uh, playing Jace recently, so we don't actually know where this is going. Uh, Lux ban against the Caitlyn makes sense. They want the they're confident in the Jinx. Interesting. But otherwise, guys, you know, there's there's really no reason. I'm I'm building value in Monte Cristo and Last Free Nation right now, and it's something I own. It's it'd be really hard to convince me to go back onto like a freelance contract that could be canceled at any time. Like, I mean, the the, the only thing that would cause me to really go back to casting at this point was like a multi-year, fully guaranteed deal um, that was huge. You know. There's not really a reason for me to do it. Like, I can work from home, make my own content, own my own company. Like, not, not, really, uh, not really something I want to do. Um, I would consider doing an international event. Uh, but again, it would have to come with a, you know, a large one-off paycheck and a, and a public apology. Otherwise, it's not really worth my time. <laughs> you cast LPL and work from home. I would make no money. I would not be able to support my family casting LPL. Uh, okay, so from Kana. they're going to ban the Renekton. Interesting that they banned the Orn here. So it's interesting they banned the Orn because Kingen might want to play Orn, actually, um, if this was a mid Jace and a Gragas jungle. But instead, the Scion's going to be picked. That's pretty clear. Heimerdinger with the Caitlyn. I was surprised there. What are they pairing this Jinx with? Thresh? Are we going back to Jinx Thresh? Okay. Kellen's going to play Callista. Hmm. That, that, I, that one came out of left field, guys. You, did, you don't expect that. Immense value against Cask, against uh, Assault and Battery. All of this stuff from the side of Hamalei Esports. And... Everything's about both Ace versus Caitlyn, like it this time a So be a mid Gragas and a top Jace. Uh, colors. Mid Annie, so Annie Knox being flexed to support. Talk about playoffs. I didn't think it was gonna be Annie it's Jinx. So That'd be pretty weird into Caitlyn Heimerdinger. Effectively, not not mathematically. <laughs> Calista feels like a better Thresh. Yeah, Don the Jungle, you are not wrong. You are not wrong. See, one's in. Probably in first, it's just you don't get lantern until six on Callista, right? But you trade it for extreme early game damage and presence. Yeah. Sweet. Yeah. Sometimes it's about Kana getting big leads on the Renekton, and sometimes he just plays Scion. And do we see anything interesting at level one there? Nobody even sweeping bot side. Showdown. It is that effectively not barring a barring a complete collapse. All right, Caitlyn and Heimerdinger probably want to stay back and just set up turrets Sometimes pretty far back in the lane or mid lane here at level one. They don't want to. They don't want the nasty level one trade uh, from Hail of Blades, Callista with Ignite. So a more poke oriented build makes sense into the Jace. Try and get the maximum. The Vi is a little awkward with Hanwha's composition. I feel um, they may be able to do. They may be able to make a pick composition by using things like Caitlyn traps and Caitlyn ult after. You know, a Gragas ult or a Vi ult. But Vi is not the ideal champion for Peel. I mean, she can do it, but she's just not the best at Peel compared to a lot of other jungle champs. Oh, no. Oh, 
kill nice job by sure. by Dom one as even with the pressure it's not quite enough to get the kills but they do get the flash here out of light and trade three summoners for two yeah that's that's not a good time uh that is a very it's not Oh, level two feels bad. As on top of life and they got that trap Spot activation. That hurts though. I think they're. I think Hanwha is like one minion uh, off of hitting two. Yeah, they're they're literally one minion off of hitting two. As you can see right down here, so this all in is extremely well timed, right? It's only the difference in these waves is one melee minion. So the all in is actually pretty crazily timed. Forward as they're getting on top of life and viper, will they get the kill here? I'm not so sure. As even with the pressure, it's not quite enough to get the kills, but they do get the flash here out of life. Yeah, that's that's not a good time. Uh, that is a very late. Level two that's going to be hit by Viper as Kellen uh, and Deft are going to be able to zone them off of this way for the foreseeable future, giving them a lot of opportunity to poke and maybe even setting up for a dive. Clid did path from his red buff directly towards his uh, top side, is now making his way back, so should be able to match. And they do have vision in the river as well. Wondering if Canyon is going to just hop over the Dragon World. The, uh, the synergy, I mean, these uh, 2v2s so in mid lane both are quite strong. I mean, we've seen the, the so, the Gragas Vi do some damage, and Lee Sin, Annie, would be very strong also. I don't actually know who wins this 2v2. Not something we've seen a whole lot of. Obviously, with Annie never really being played in mid in the professional scene. And the changes that have been made. Is Viper overrated? Hell no. Viper is super good. Yeah, Kana just forced an early back from King. That's a disaster. Right? Like, the longer that Sion can just stay in his lane... And, and not back. Uh, everything that he can trade. Uh, I think the the Orn ban is a little weird here. I would have banned the Scion over the Orn. Uh, I'm not going to get anything done. Slain phase. I'm just looking to skill. Try and meet up with the rest of my team eventually. But with this bot lane prio secured this aggressively this early, Deft and Kellen now going to be on the front foot uh, with a lot of. Is Callisto a good support? Callisto is an extremely good support. In a great position. Uh, Lista is extremely so strong as support. Like lanes have a lot more, Very lane dominant, since, uh, since huge all in, huge objective control and, and as by using Rend. Like is Saves your really AD carry aggressive. by using ult as on the AD carry, it's so good. Look at the control that's set up. Shit on like lane, shit on objectives. Uh, didn't get Prevent your ADC so sure from getting shit on. Was. But as bot lane could keep shoving, they also faked it back, uh, Deft and Kellen did, to keep a Viper in this lane. So they get an extra shove in, mm. they'll be able to back here. Greetings from the UK, my team. Greetings from Los Angeles. Yeah, take a look at the mid Annie win rate as well. Is eight and one. Uh, overall, I think it's. Yeah, the Annie bands have been coming in hard, especially red side Annie bands. Annie's become first pick, first pick blue side priority for a lot of teams. Okay, we can give them Caitlyn. We have an answer. We have counter pick, which we can actually utilize for the bottom lane. And also we get a couple of super high tier picks uh, nowadays in this meta, which are Annie and Lee Sin. Kana making sure that the wave won't push away from him is actually going to interrupt his back to go and clear that out. Uh, remember, he still has teleport advantage and he has his ultimate out, so he might not even go need bot. that. Might look, yeah, exactly. Might look for a bot play. Try <laughs> and secure that. <laughs> yeah. Well, of course. You're, yeah. You're, you're level six. You have your teleport advantage for your for your laning. So just run down towards the bot lane. Absolutely love this player. Now, all oh, life uh, should kind of uh -oh. see this one coming because this is this is the Scion Classic. Times. Okay. You know that Kana has a teleport advantage, and Henny is currently missing. So life, you don't yep. have flash. And your wave is pushing up. Hamwa should be so scared of don't, this. This is very predictable. Hug the turret. Basically, and I, yeah. I think that Hummel Life Esports know, like, okay, well, there's yeah, nobody top, question mark ping. you know, they... like, he's bot, right? We all know this. Hummel Life okay. Esports should know it. D plus absolutely know it. The maker uh, just dropping the tibs. <laughs> SB Ostling, thank you for your prime, so appreciate it. 4v3, there's no teleport on the side of Hummel Life Esports right now to answer this. They're just They're going to get a, really get a full dive. This Clit has a good read, though. Hummel read this super well, actually. Yeah, life is, just dead. life is level three though, so he's just dead. There's no way to get away from that. 
no counter play, literally. As, uh, the okay, huge wave being pushed in the top off. side, though. It's kind of interesting, as they're going to use this play on the bottom side. Remember, it doesn't really matter, because Kana got the assist, and he's also playing Scion. Chris Ark, my erudite friend. What an excellent choice you've made to give me your Twitch Prime. Truly, Monty is more deserving of Bezos' money than anyone else. moment that you leave it up, because that's what should happen. Caitlyn has been incredibly successful, but this Kalista with the early level 2 that they're able to hit, has been in control of this lane, together with Deft. Now they have the mid play. Showmaker... Deepos is playing this super well. Honestly, Hanwha played that situation not too bad, but they're still finding themselves pretty far behind. They got zoned off on the bot side of the map. Nice stun. Nice stun. Nice by Hanwha. Oh, the body block on the zap. Life is going to get in front of it. Deft will push them out and trade flashes, but not able to secure the kill. Hero. Clid will get spotted there. Important part on that dragon pit. Could have been a disaster otherwise. Not going to be the case. Very nicely done there. And there is the risk. You've given me that indeed, Tristark. There's a reason why we generally Erudite people would have said uh, indubitably. A sticker on this indubitably. Because one mistake and you get taken down. The Caitlyn and Heimer lane still has that power. But while that was happening, right, Clit showed him bot, and immediately... The any roaming isn't uh, honestly getting punished that much either. Skragas can't map. actually shove this wave yeah, that fast. Really cool what they're doing. Canyon? Canyon in a little bit of trouble. He is going to bake him in, essentially. A showmaker. Kellen's here. The stun a Nobody of expects the, the wild Callista. You know, Kellen not really able to chase him alone, so showmaker not going to throw down a flash tippers or anything. As he wanted to land the, the Q with the stun, maybe a little bit greedy there. As he got fooled by the vision. And so that's not going to amount to a kill onto King. And this is on vision being started up now. Kellen and Life both leaving a lane, trying to fight for this early Herald. And with the pings, it looks like D Plus is making the call to instead head towards the early dragon. And to pick that up instead will provide an opportunity for Humble Life to equalize the gold a little bit. And do keep in mind, they still have a call. And Humble life comp skills very well uh, as well. It's not like they, they had to win the early game or they have to get big leads for that composition to work. Uh, the main point that you'd be a little afraid of is in the mid game when, you know, Kingen is going to spike very hard once the call is done, once he gets a second item. But Viper in particular has been yeah, D plus, far behind. D plus really and playing the, the front to back team fighting style. To have to solve because on any oh, not again. Oh, my guy. Man, Viper him. is. He's something else right now. This is not what you're looking for as Viper, you know. He's, he's been he's playing like, this lane so well. I mean, he's 20 CS down, ball, but so he was also just playing smart. The problem is that the CS advantage that was gained in this bot lane by that dive really hasn't been matched in any and other lane. Like, kill? I wish we could have seen what more of what's going on in mid. Because I am curious, but honestly, like, D plus has been playing the macro so well in this laning phase. You'll notice they really haven't dropped any minion waves, and they've been... They've been doing lane assignments to cover for each other. So they were able to deny right here. But Annie immediately went top. They had pressure in mid. And even though Hanwha smelled that coming a mile away, they just couldn't get out of it. But the clapback is real. Yeah, he just gets trapped there. Like, what the fuck's going on? No flash. Not a lot of counter plays this one. And then this is such a big moment. With Kalin... Stun right into trap. It's as easy as that. Uh, doesn't have his sums available, ends up going down, and then Deft crucially doesn't find... If he finds the pick on Viper, that's 100% worth it, right? Like that's he probably gets a double kill, kill there if he gets the, the speed up from Jinx passive. that's not the case now, that early CS lead that you built for yourself is gone. How about life with some great individual play towards the bottom half of the map? Now, equalizing the score as a Showmaker is just not going to be able to interrupt Zeka there. Does have his Rod of Ages done now, and I assume Zeka will get it just at the tail end of the CP. No, Ooh, doesn't actually finish it. That is pretty going rough. To be, yeah, that's going to be a toughie down the line. It's going to substantially set you back uh, a couple of minutes on that uh, ten stack power spike. Yeah, there are a couple of. Pages they didn't. Uh, uh, the great, the great <laughs> Donald. Uh, he didn't walk into the Kate trap. He got hit. He got stunned by Heimer grenade, and then the. Uh, so the trap was placed underneath like him during the stun. At the he's like, please give me one option to alt. I just want to press this button, please. 
And bottom lane, it, it felt like D-plus knew it was coming, so they played it very safe. They got pushed in, okay. They're not gonna get ganked by Clit, so Clit still looking for that option of a lane to gank. Would love to go bot with no flashes here for Deft or Kellen, but uh, was denied there for- Alright, so we've caught up in terms of gold now. Those, the kill and bot side really helped, also being able to farm back up. The return to parity, but D-plus probably still has the better scaling in this game. Mostly just been farming mid, moving around the map, trying to catch uh, wherever they're... Like, I get that Clit has been really great on these early game junglers, and you want to put him on something with, Vi like, Vi. But it, the Vi just provides so little for you in the mid and late game. You basically have to hope that Zekka has a good barrel to isolate somebody, and you follow up with the... Uh, don't really have an angle with the vial. Looking just waiting in case Clip goes for the gank. Yeah, counter gank opportunity there could be big. Uh, not going to be the case, and Canyon will be moving towards his top side jungle. So uh, now Clip is like, please, maybe we can gank Scion <laughs> with Flash. Like, I don't know, man. It's not fine. The problem is that any front to back team fight in the late game is just going to get bonked by this Scion. He's so he's going to be Kana's going to be so jump. huge. There, but yeah, with, with his boots he really is not very behind right now, and he'll be able to absorb a lot of the poke from the Jace and the the Caitlyn. I just really wonder why the Scion wasn't banned. When you see first rotation Jace, you see the Scion. Like I get that they wanted to ban the Renekton because Kana's been. I think he's unbeaten with it so far this split. But the the Orn ban over the Scion ban, I find slightly confusing. Scion and then I think the Scion's but way more annoying really hard than the Orn. The Orn's good into Jace too, don't get me wrong, but I think it's... Very, very you almost, you know, you almost dragons. kind of want the Renekton so actually picked here too. Space, uh, well, the Gragas is very playable into the Renekton matchup, by the way. Gragas, Gragas has an okay matchup into Renekton. I know it's an outlier because 369 is an insane Gragas player, but we've actually seen Gragas solo kills under Renekton from 369 and LPL. I think the matchup is very, very playable. It's just possible Kingen doesn't play top Gragas. But it would have been nice to have that flexibility so you could just leave the Renekton up. And essentially, you know, gave up some control of lanes to just play it a little bit more passively so they don't get ganked. Wait for their flashes to be back up. They're feeling pretty okay with that. The ocean. You also play Jace mid lane if that's the case, because you have the, the flexibility. This makes me think that King just doesn't play top Gragas. And we haven't, to be fair, we haven't seen much top Gragas in uh, in LCK compared to LPL. Much more popular pick in China. Without a big item here, you know, not everybody's got a mythic at this point. You see that Black Cleaver here. But I would have preferred that. I would have preferred them to take Jace, ban Orn Scion, let Kana have Renekton, and then just have a plan for it topside. Mid lanes now with their mythics done. Zaka also got his finished, even in the plates, and paints a very great picture of this early game. It is pretty much dead even. Early on here, uh, Fate School now available. That's a big cooldown. It does mean that for Clid, actually getting on top of Deft is going to be a lot harder. One of the issues that I can see the D plus come from, uh, run into, barring what we mentioned earlier, is that their pick potential is great, but their engage can be somewhat lackluster. Just relying on Sign is not going to feel amazing. And as long as Showmaker has Flash available, you have the Flash Tibbers. But outside of that, can run into some issues again. My guy, Chronicler, you have Canyon so on Lee Sin. Himself, Canyon. Even just one Ca Canyon on Lee Sin. Again, he can engage for you. You just, <laughs> you calm down there, buddy. This is an carry, Canyon. Lee Sin. He can engage. Comes along, It'll be okay. Bot, I suppose, <laughs> now going to be starting this one up of the utmost importance, but it does look like Hamalai Esports will just let them have it at this point in time. Yeah, Bot Pryo is there for D+. They were able to secure that, and as a result, will now find their way, and that is a Cloud Dragon. Oh, boy. Which, if you're Hanwha, I think you're going to be fairly happy with. If it is a, a, a Mountain Drake, or particularly Infernal, like any with Infernal. No, is dude. Infernal is, is very bad news. Mountain Sign is also not fun to play into. What about what about cloud what about cloud jinx where she just rockets gets speed runs at you then gets excited off of the first killer assist that she gets sounds pretty horrible to me so at the end of the day just trading objectives that could just barely able to tp into this one 
and we will well and certainly fall into a little bit of a uh does blue side have siege advantage one. they should have siege they advantage but also i mean the scion front line is going to be able to block a lot of that poke and you can constantly threaten engages onto them they have their their form of disengage is obviously like setting up heimer turrets having heimer ult and then also having the grog assault but the problem is is like hanwa really hasn't affected their goals and, and the vi is going to be really so awkward in later team fights we'll have to see how clid uses it it's also both teams with these but i think hanwa is going to have a hard time and d plus is just perfectly happy sitting here it doesn't really matter that they're a, a thousand gold deficit they can just chill out and wait for late game continue to control objectives they'll basically constantly have priority over the drake now uh, Humble Life going to immediately equalize and, and they will uh, do I think Gore Drinker Jace is better here versus two melee? Probably, because the Annie's right? might get clo in close as well. But on either side, you can be like, yeah, we got, it's we got probably Jace, better. You know, like, I agree with that. that they provide. Uh, obviously, Caitlyn skills incredibly well. Zekka is going to be a big That's true, Ox. Good point. Cloud Soul, playing against Cloud Soul as Heimer is so frustrating. The slow resist and the 50% move speed pretty much negate Rylice. That is a very good point. Him with some late game playmaking as well. So, both of these teams already love playing it kind of slow. Uh oh. Deft. Yeah, flying a little bit too close to the Sun, who in this case is uh, Gale Force Caitlyn. <laughs> so, there it is. The mid tier one goes down. Okay, that's going to be pretty important for the next dragon. So, at least Hanwha, I think, has a chance in terms of. Oops. Oh, my, what a kick! Just gets two people casually. Just canyon things. Okay. Jesus. Beautifully set up bait there. For the plus, they have Kana back on the wall. This is here as the is here. Is the mid tier one goes down? Yeah. Do they know that ward is there? And then for D plus already mentioned. When is the ward placed? In perfect with these be ahead in gold so i don't mind their position at all in this ward is placed we'll right there mid game spikes by and life it's also both going to like yeah we got having a great Eddie love play <laughs> so there it is the mid tier one goes down as i was saying i'm not sure this is a bait they didn't know that there was a ward there Herald can the thing is though that they saw king in on the pink ward so they suspect there's a ward here when he starts moving up. So they know there, there was a ward there when he starts going into hammer form. So they do bait it out a little bit. Oh my god. Canyon, why are you so one goes down. As I was saying, you know, this is what the second Rift Herald can offer you. This is a Scion, so it's going to ult the Jace, but everybody is here. Look at that. Beautiful. The CC from the kick means that they get life as well. Mm. Says, this is my rift. Beautifully set up bait there. For the plus, they have Kana back on the wall. This is sign. Sign generally doesn't. It's care. it's not a trap. It's a punish, guys. On, There's a difference. The they didn't know the ward was there, but obviously they know it's there now, right? When when Kana engages Kana's in hammer form. They sense it's coming. They have a ward in the brush there. Right, so they're fully aware. This could have gone even better. A good play by Canyon, though, to be patient when he sees the that there, he he's aware that there might be a ward in that brush based on how you see King and moving around the the pink ward that they had. But it is a little bit sloppy not to check that brush for a ward, at least a pink ward, right? It's like, dude. Saying, you know, this right is what there. The second Rift that, that's like Coach's Nightmare, by the way. For the plus. Since it's coming, they have a ward in the brush there, right? So they're fully aware. This could have gone the smart better, play. Right? It's like, not like that play was mechanically it's amazing, it's guys. It's it, just a really good reaction by D+. Plus, uh, that, the that, information oh, that they have. They die even faster. They get two kills. Uh, did, did cost them a decent amount of cooldowns, though. That is Flash Golem. Has the brush vision bug from the T1 game been figured out? Nope. And... I haven't tried to figure it out. Did somebody did somebody uh, clip it and send it to Vandril? I thought somebody said they were going to do it. So it's a nice momentum swing for D+. It mainly means that there will now be again heading gold. 
but that is also a pretty costly investment when it comes to your cooldowns, which you won't have available for the next soul fight, or soul point fight rather, if they want to try and set themselves up for that uh, cloud soul. Yeah, I mean, if they want to get it as soon as possible, absolutely. There is a world where they say, okay, well, we even things up. We're, we can give Owner solo Q Lee Sin cut clip? No, I haven't seen it. <laughs> no big deal. And just kind of go from there if they want to play it slow and then kind of look for the next good opportunity. So we'll have to wait and see how they uh, do play it out as we're just trading emotes. This is the highlight of the game right now. Uh, that's all that's happening. Yeah, there, yep. there's nothing else going on. The uh, dragon is about to spawn. Baron is about to spawn, but uh, it's mostly going to be towards that dragon that we expect to see the action. Looking at the spikes, we do have Showmaker actually in a great spot in this game, right? Like this Jinx will be huge. Yeah, the Jinx already huge. On the Rod of Ages has his Shadow Flame done as well. Also, Dragon it's Deft Jinx. For Deft. Legendary for Jinx. Humble Life, it's just a little bit awkward. We don't have a second item for Zaka yet. King and hasn't evolved his uh, his tier yet, so there is an opportunity here for Humble to try and contest. But you are taking a small risk, and if it doesn't pay out and you fall substantially behind in this fight, I do think your game becomes a whole lot harder. Yeah. Let's see if they want to take a risk. Posturing looks like they will. Kalen takes a big beating, double chugs his refillable. Yeah. This committal to this Drake, very interesting, but you see that with Teleport coming in, Hobolife Esports not just going to let it happen, but the vision control certainly in favor of DK, and that means that the Shock Blast, you know, they did hit Kellen, It's just free, it's, man. It's just the, the guy who's going to uh, hit Fate's Call onto death, essentially, as, you know, the damage being done in here. Another missed Shock Blast. That's three. Third one, rather, now from the side. I mean, you just can't take that. Once the Callista Spears Humble are in there with the Rend. Able to break in. Just free, guys. D-plus, just, just free. Go. Free objectives. Not only that, but D-plus also able to make their way through the jungle towards their mid lane, so not even going to be at any What risk. game is this? 1-3? Oh, taking damage on this turret. Nicely done. Uh, it's there. game Vertex 1. To get mid lane prio. As yet, the shock blasts are big, but you would rather hit those when the dragon is still there. Because now... Uh, and know. he's only hitting Kellen. Yeah. And, well, at least he doesn't have pots anymore. That's a hit on death. That's big, but... D-plus don't really need to keep shoving here. Uh, they choose to continue. <laughs> Pretty interesting, like you're saying. I mean, there's not much. <laughs> Evie, I, I still can't get over the name change from Dom One to D-plus. I know it's terrible. I mean, Dom One was terrible too. Well, let's be real. We have the damage if they don't. You're just you're just nostalgic for Dom One. It's not like Dom One was a good name or anything. Of the Baron. So maybe just threatening that, but at the end of the day, just gonna have to back away from this one. Why is Annie so strong? Mega buffs, uh, stun every time you spawn or respawn. Rod of Ages. You pick. You pick the reason. Now with a transformed second item, so there is a lot more power in the Humble Life comp, which will be relevant in approximately three minutes, and probably not until then, Valdez. Most esports <laughs> names suck. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. If only we had somebody smart yes, to name teams like Renegades and stuff. Trail. That were actually fun with coherent uh, logos and uh, brand design. To pick this one up at this point in the game. Yeah, damage amplification on Showmaker will be relevant. On, on Deft, I still have a hard time seeing it work because the Also, Viego gets stunned yeah. so straight away when he possesses her. That is an interesting fact that I did not know. It makes sense. Deft is to it makes sense that that would be the case. Uh, but I had not considered that because we haven't really seen a lot of. We've only seen a few Viego games since Annie was back in the meta. <laughs> Renegade to you, great, great name. A reason why he had a, what, 90 career we agree on that. Really we agree on that. Uh, Rogue was a decent uh, name, but their logo uh, is awful. Ah, uh, I kind of like the Rogue logo. High. Rogue was definitely heavily inspired by Renegades so in terms of uh, brand design. Life as if we're going to just let the side lanes be and fight for mid prior, would yeah. be surprised if a fight breaks out a little <laughs> bit earlier here. I mean, the Renegades uh, design was so good that the XFL just stole it. And any time <laughs> they literally stole my branding. Really have a way to get back to health, it, at this point. So that's going to be a way for Humble Life Esports, you know, once there are some crucial objectives. 
to just go ahead and do that. Instead, they elect with not much available to just, you know, push up mid, see if they can get a little bit more chip damage and see if they can roll it into something more. But We're just kind of waiting here yeah, for the next fight. I mean, the, the thing about this game is D-plus is just happy to play the, the Dragon Soul the stacking game. The so they don't have to fight at any other and point in time. It. They're just going to chill. And as the game goes on, I do think that the poke from Kingen will become less relevant because right now, Deft is uh, what I assume will be building into an Why does everyone just steal my shit? Uh, because it's good. For as long as we can and make remember. good shit. But once the BT comes in, that's when the chase poke I'll show you guys. It's actually outrageous. I mean, I would have sued them if I still owned the brand, but I sold the brand before the XFL did their thing. How to fix 100 Thieves with two player changes in the offseason? What are you talking about, dude? They already have Unforgiven. Just play Unforgiven. Can Zeka get on top of Deft somehow? Uh, can Clid find an ultimate onto this Jinx? Uh, it's really hard because actually getting to a Jinx with Fate's Call when there is any, when there is. Evil Geniuses was not a bad name. I think it's pretty Anna corny, is personally. A extremely tanky guy. The, pe the thing is, people. Pe is look, the old EG logo also fight, sucked. Uh, the new EG logo is much better, though the redesigned one. But the problem is, is that people were just super nostalgic because they they've been a uh, like a top brand in esports for so long. In this current meta. In right now, I think you can you can say that. Yeah, sure. Because the problem it can is is that as as tanky as he is, as we do see right now, Poke's still very very relevant. Ooh, TP um, coming in. Ooh, they don't have vision of this. Yeah. So zeka has got a really nice angle. There were no pings that I could see from the side of DK. We if could see get, some cask shenanigans. If he can get both Deft and Kellen and make sure there isn't a Fate's Call, it would be huge. Should try to make sure that they're not grouped up here. I think they might have a suspicion. I really wish Team Liquid just would change their <laughs> name to the Mustangs and or the or the Broncos or the Colts As they just, yeah, they just or the no Stallions. They have zero clue. All right, maybe Showmaker's the answer. Or the Thoroughbreds. Oh my do. fucking god! What is Showmaker doing? As they just, yeah, they just have no idea. No, they don't know. That was okay. So this is a very good flank by Zeka, even though he gets seen. Really nice angle. There were no pings hmm? that I could see from the side of DK. He actually gets seen by the Sentinel. If he can get both Deft and Kellen and make sure there isn't a Fate's Call. Huge. Oh, actually, I don't think he does get seen. They just bring up the vision at exactly the time the Sentinel observers are trolling me. Look at that. It looks like he gets seen, but it's actually because they open up. Is it? Yeah, they open up both both angles of the observing at the same time. That's actually so cute. Look at this, guys. He TPs to the ward in the brush, and then he pink wards the brush, and he's like, is anybody here? he knows they're going to go for it in 30 this. seconds. Yeah. So he bypasses the vision that's in the river. All right, Zeka. Really I see nice you making fun plays. That I could see from the side of DK. We if could see get... some cask shenanigans. If he can get both Deft and Kellen and make sure there isn't a Fate's Call, it'd be huge. Should try to make sure that they're not grouped up here. I think they might have a suspicion. Yeah, the Knights is another good one for Team Liquid. Kellen's playing back. I, I like their logo a lot better than I like their name. I think their logo is incredibly good. As they just, yeah, they just have no idea. No, they don't know. They have zero clue. All right, maybe Showmaker. That's such a good play, guys. That makes me smile. There's no reason that Showmaker thinks that there's a Gragas in that brush. Oh, Ollie 8, thank you for your sub. I love that play. I love the play where they basically Hanwha just baits them. They bait them into the river thinking that it's safe. Like they don't actually clear vision. So it looks like they're A ramming. They do nothing to clear vision because they've set up this trap with Zeka TPing to this ward and then playing placing a pink ward. So they know 100% that he hasn't been seen. And so they pretend to like slowly take advantages. But this is such a wonderful bait by D+. So what he's doing right now is Zeka's trying to see if there's anybody walking over. I think he's trying to use his lens. Is Oracle's Kellen's lens to see back. if there's anybody walking in that corridor? In the feeds, call someone. And by someone, I mean Deft. Yeah. As and they then... Just, yeah, they just have no idea. No, they don't know. 
they see him with the blue trinket, and then it's just a stun all in. As they catch the one member and the unstoppable Just every form of CC. As they say, okay, they are immediately going to angle E from Gragas, ult from Gragas, ult from Vi. Threaten this, but still a risk. Not gonna go for it. Just gonna give the cloud drake away. Yeah, making sure that you maintain a seamless mid lane prio uh, also helps with maybe Hallwell wanted to go for a Baron there, right? Could be an opportunity, even though Showmaker has teleport. Uh, the T1 will try. I'm <laughs> fairly certain they would run yeah. towards that Baron and give it a go. Not going to be the case. Beautiful flank there by Zeka. I think FlyQuest's name yeah, has been good. Oh my god, their their branding has gotten better because of what uh, Trisha, Megumi X Bear, did for them. Their name is garbage. FlyQuest, like, ugh, you, you really can't do better. It, that, that name comes from, like, the Eden's family's son. The Eden's family owns the Milwaukee Bucks. Like, their son who had, like, a some, like, like I think MMO clan or something like that called FlyQuest. It's just trash. But you can see that they can just use this as a way to start this one up. As Chronicler, very importantly, just pointed at the IE that is finished for the Jinx. So DK are like, you know what? Let's fight. Being an Esseril does. Okay, nice little angle, but it's straight to the Annie! Oh, they had no idea as well! As, oh man, that's going to do a huge number Kellen? to the Heimer, but uh, Kellen's just gonna die as the spite is good, at least for Canyon. Kana pretty tanky, and you see Vi tries to go in, Clint not able to create anything, except a little bit of space for Viper, as they're trying to zone them out of good. Mid prial pushing into this one. They don't have the tier one down, but you can see that they can just use this as a way to. Uh, I mean, free entry there. They get the pick off, right? They get the pick off, but then here's the replay. But then they just wait for the respawn, push bot, right? So they get a turret in bot side. They disrespect the fact that Showmaker actually still has TP, so he's able just to TP to the mid wave. You have to be so cautious. I mean, you have to remember that Rend plus Jinx. Plus smite on Lee Sin. You can do this Baron extremely quickly. And then Kingen's like, gotta go back, guys. I need an item. I need an item. Meanwhile, they're just here on the Baron. What did he get? Did he even buy anything? Hello? What did he buy? Did he buy anything? He might have bought something before his TP came through. Did he buy... Did he buy Sorella? What did he buy? Pushing into this one. They don't have the tier one down. Why is he recalling? He needs mana? This as a way to uh, start this one up as Chronicler very importantly just pointed. Okay, well, we don't know if he bought anything. That's very annoying. For the Jinx, so DK are like, you know what? Let's fight. Being an Esseril does. Okay, nice little angle, but it's straight to the Annie. Oh, they have E that is finished for the Jinx. So DK are like, you know what? Let's fight. Being an Esseril does. Okay. Oh, the surprise brush part two. Now it's D plus's surprise surprise brush. The rockets didn't hit him. They tried to check it and instead like got double stunned. Oh, Feels no bad, well. man. They tried so to check it. To huge if only they had a Jace there to check the brush with a with a shock blast instead. Except a little bit of space for Viper. They're trying to zone this hop left Sorelda's. Okay, so he did get the Sorelda's. There was a purpose, not sort of. Not, it wasn't worth, Rana. but. DK will pick up the Baron. Life checked. Hello to you, checked French Saga, my erudite friend. Anyone, so felt safe, but the most distinguished chat on Twitch. I don't even think I have mods in here. I don't even brush. need mods. You guys are so well behaved. Right there, that one, that one I guess I saw Ox in here. He's a mod. Ultimate. Annie with a ton of damage to come through. Look at this. Because obviously, uh, DK is very oh. aware. Yeah. Yeah, he's ready. And if you don't find an angle like that, uh, uh, if you're home, well, you can't really fight this. You need to try and Kellen's. get into the back line. Yeah, it's very funny. Kellen actually not able to get him to bear it well. I think he was also maybe trying to offer Canyon like a jump target, but... Uh, yeah, it could be the case. Could be Great way. play by Showmaker. I, I just love that we got back-to-back -back <laughs> bait brushes, guys. To, uh, try and, and make sure that Deft could be still pulled, because as long as he's alive, Deft really doesn't die. Yeah. So that, that play from Showmaker... Might end up 
being a game deciding play because now the Baron is available and it doesn't perfectly lead into uh, this objective that's about to come up uh, in two and a half minutes, which could give Soul trying to collapse on Kana. Let's see if they can actually siege, though. Might be kind of difficult, because the, the Jinx can't really walk up, because you might get hit by uh, Gragas Barrel. But might not be here for Showmaker, who still has his Flash engage. Hmm. Interesting idea, actually. I, I like what Han was doing. I like what Han was doing. It's very, it's very actually difficult for D plus to engage unless they go under turret. Yeah, I mean you can, you can use, you can yank the Jinx back by using Callista ult, but this is kind of hard to siege into. Like you're sieging into Heimer turrets. It's dangerous unless you commit to a dive with Annie and Scion ults. Getting the most out of this, Jay, uh, this Jace. Nicely done, Baron Powerplay. Not going to be game-breaking in the slightest. And with no uh, mistakes my made, kid's in my garage now. Wave for that's available for Halva. They are holding on tight. And once Viper finishes uh, his IE, <laughs> it will change. The, the one downside is that with how far he has been put behind... My, my stream has been invaded by top players. ...attention that was paid by D+. Like not Your top, my favorite player of all time is uh, which is a full is score. Way still. Yeah. I like so, Mata a lot too. I don't know Obviously, Faker. Love me some some rookie, some Smeb. Or anything else, but Cloud is really uh, yeah, yeah, changed this yeah, game. Hextech and, uh, Hextech and, and Infernal are not much better. Yeah. Hextech, Infernal, or Mountain were the other choices, so. Those all would have had to been fought over, even for individual drakes. So, teleport from Zeka does come through. All right, Jonas Strong is hiding the vision. That's when he knows I love Dandy too. Afoot. As yes, of course, he's my favorite player of all time. But still, love uh, Def. Position here on the streak for the side of DK, 16 seconds away. Rookie. As Kana just looking for the angle. Showmaker has flash. That's big. Yeah, he's just waiting for an option. As Viper, he's getting pretty close to the sun. Anytime he steps up, he is within range of the Annie. <laughs> yeah. It's just sad. Oh, <laughs> oh no. Oh, that ward might be important. Okay, well, I mean, spotted. they see the Vi. Last plant down. Play just going to go away as the cask is not enough to steal it away. And Cloud Soul is... Gotten here by the side of DK. I mean, what do you say? Like, I think their best chance of winning was unfortunately just gone because Hanwha decided to play that super well. Hi, Max. You do it too. Hi. Say hi. Hey. Hi, guy. Well, I mean, Future Chovy. <laughs> Last plant down. just gonna go away as the cask is not enough. To... <laughs> oh no, old that ward might be important. Okay, well I mean, spotted. they see the vine. Last plant down. Play just gonna go away as the cask is not enough. Just, uh... as Viper. Can you see Max? Okay, one more time. You can see Max. Okay. okay. Then, we, then we have to go watch the rest of this show. The rest the rest of the game. Okay. Hi. Say hi. Hi. <laughs> Oh. <laughs> okay, bye, Max. I know you don't want to leave, but it's time for you to go to your birthday party, okay? He's getting free. As Kana just looking for the angle. Showmaker has flash. That's big. Yeah, he's just waiting for an option. As Viper, he's getting pretty close to the sun. Anytime he's there, you go, up, guys. Normally, normally, I I don't put my my kid out there because I think it's weird when parents like put their children on social media before they're old enough to consent. You know, I don't want. I don't want like a million pictures of him out there publicly um, because I think he should be able to choose later in his life what people see of him online. So I, I really have a lot of 
ethical issues with with people who do that. So you know, I've posted like two pictures of him, I think, ever on Twitter. So I just I prefer to let him live his life. You know, he can pick later. I mean, it's not like we don't have stuff he can share down the road if he wants. But I I feel super weird about people who like use kids on social media like that. Range of the Annie. I think it's gross. Yeah. And I say this as, you know, somebody who has a lot of friends who do this, and I think it's super gross. Hey, well, I mean, they see the Vi. Last plant down. Flint is going to go away as the cast. A nice attempt at a steal. To steal it away, and Cloud Soul is gone here by the side of DK and Light. Almost dead. By the end of all of this, as Q is in, you see Canyon. He's real fast. He's looking for that one. As here comes the Scion ult. Looking for whatever he can see, but gonna just go on to a trap instead. I don't know. I, I think they might not have seen King in there. Uh, <laughs> King and actually going back into the copy. Now they're running towards Clint. Uh, Look how speedy they are. Yeah, there's no objective, so they can just do this, right? As jungle on jungle action, Canyon is up two levels and so much faster. Nice ult from the side of Clint will save his life. He actually Clint ulted yeah, right there to stop the kick. Pretty cute. Right now for them. And with the soul going over, D plus not that ahead in terms of raw gold, but the extra. Uh, what's your take on the Jinx pick? I mean, it's uh, Deft playing sure it, so Deft there's always an opportunity, I feel, because back. Deft is one of the best Jinx players of all time. I think so that with the number of ADC bands that were in this draft and the fact that they knew that it, it was going to be picked into Caitlyn, that it's fine. I think it's yeah, fine. That, that's, that's gonna they also banned the, the Lux. The Karma and the Lux were both banned, so like the best thing was going to be Heimer, and Jinx can just farm safely versus a Heimerdinger or a Heimerdinger Caitlyn. I think it was actually a very good pick here. It's not. I think it's still situational, but I like it in this context. Plus, they had both Thresh and Callista to pick from. So terrifying to play into. But look at that, Zeka. Oh, how does he keep finding it? How does he keep getting these angles? That is the Showmaker brush, though. So I feel like somebody's going to check it as... How they know. Okay, well... Yeah, they should know that something is afoot. We'll see him. Something is indeed a foot. Sorry, I just wanted to say it like that. Here is Zekka, and here is Clint into the pit. They are full turning as the Scion Ultimate comes Yeah, Force Viper to Flash. I mean, Kingen's just... Sorry, I just wanted to say it like that. What, is, what is, is Kingen going to do here? Is, this splits up the composition, right? Cyan ult, they see Zekka on the flank. They can just all in on one side. Well, Kellen almost trolled Deft right there by flashing into him with a Vi ult on him. But it's okay. The front to back team fighting is just not going to work. And the flank collapse was super fast by D plus because they knew it was coming. Clint, the Vi is just so useless. <laughs> Vi is just so useless this game. Unless he can just run away from the Tibbers, but still three kills to the side of DK in this fight. It's slow, it's methodical, but looks like D plus. It's not a it's not a Jace flank, guys. I mean, what do you what are you supposed to do? Wait, like literally, I don't think this is a bad play by by Hanwha. Okay, well, they, yeah, they they have to get some sort of flank. They can't fight we'll a front to back. The problem is that there is a blue trinket ward that sees Zekka, right? So when they 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 have knowledge of where Clid and Zekka are right now, so as soon as somebody appears right here, they they just got, got all in. They turn. This is a really good play from D plus, knowing their compositional win condition, right? I just wanted to say it like that. Here is Zekka. Zekka pushes them out. He tries to get somebody, but then all of a sudden he actually ends up helping D plus with that ultimate because now they can collapse on this flank faster. Force Viper to ult over the wall. He's going to get hit by Scion ult. The Q misses from Canyon, but you get this Tibber stun. He just walks up, ease him. That's dead. Canyon still has kick, by the way. He can follow in, gets a kick right there, uses flash, R flash to get onto Caitlyn. So he cues in, starts his kick animation, flashes, immediately kicks Viper in. Viper has no flash. He actually doesn't net over the wall. Has stopwatch. I mean, Canyon, just amazing this fight, right? Really well played by D+. That is a, that's a very clean team fight. 
It's slow, it's methodical, but looks like D-Plus has done it here, Valdez, as Canyon is... Oh, come on. <laughs> yeah, he doesn't have to get in there either. As uh, has done his job. Help them with their teams. They are and that's it. That's game one, guys.